Hey everyone, good morning to all of you. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Today is Monday, Monday, May the 4th. And I would like to begin this day by showing you something really cool. I don't know if you know, but May the 4th is called Star Wars Day because, as you know, one of the most famous slogans by this very famous movie is sort of like this. Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you because one of the famous slogans is may the force be with you. I don't know if you can see it on the back of my screen there. May the force be with you. So anyway, I just want to wish you a, an excellent day today, Monday, and I want to go and show you that we're going to be first off with a really cool class, and it's going to be library. We're going to do some library class today. And in our library class, it's going to be closely linked to English really because we're going to go ahead and jump into what and jump into comprehension, okay? So I have this file right here, and this is what we're going to be working on, all right? <clears throat> this is part of our comprehension book. And first off, in this video, I'm going to read it along with you, and we're gonna figure out how that goes. We're gonna discuss some words that are very important to this um, story. And first off, we're gonna go and begin with this story is called Stowaway. Okay, so Stowaway begins um, by this little text up here. And it says, this historical adventure tells the story of a young Tudor boy in the 16th century and his dream to sail to sail with the famous Captain Francis Drake. Now I have to tell you, the 15th century, sorry, the 16th century starts in the 1500s, 1501 until the 1600, okay? So it's a very long time ago. Today we are in two thousands. Imagine that was like 500 years ago. All right. And we're going to begin with uh, this part that says how Dickon envied his friend Tib, who was aboard the Pelican, for the famous Francis Drake was its captain. Francis Drake, England's greatest sailor and friend of good Queen Bess. Okay. So, we're talking about, we're in England, we're in the 16th century, and we have our main character here, his name is Dickon, and he envied his best friend, Tib, okay? And envy is a feeling where it's like you want to do what the person is doing, or you want to be who the person is, or you want to have what the person have, and it's a really negative feeling, okay? Now, um, we're talking about the pelican. You see how this name is sort of tilted to the side because that's the name of a boat, of a ship, really. You see this big ship down here? That is the pelican. Now, we're taking into consideration this was a very long time ago, okay? And the captain of this ship is called Francis Drake, okay? Francis Drake who had come back from the Spanish main, his ship laden with gold. Now, laden with gold means that the ship was full, full, full of gold. And now he was setting out on another exciting voyage with Tib as his captain boy. Remember who Tib is? Dickens' best friend. All right. Now, Dickens gritted his teeth to stop the tears. You know what gritted your teeth means? It's when you tighten your teeth, uh, you know, really strongly and you sort of push them together 
it's because it's like you're trying to hold your feelings in. And then this guy, this in this situation, Dixon is gritting his teeth to stop the tears, to stop him from crying, okay? He tried to get a job, but the second mate had taken one look at his lame leg and said, sorry lad, we only take the fit and able. You couldn't climb that main mast. Now, let's go back to Dickon. He feels envious that his best friend is going to be um, a cabin boy for Francis Drake, who's the captain of what's the name of the ship? The Pelican. Okay. Now, when we talk about Dickon, who is envious of his friend, because he can't do the same. He has a lame leg, a bad leg. He can't walk properly. And the person who is in charge, the second mate, of letting him on the ship says, no, no, sorry, lad. We only take the fit and able. You couldn't climb the mainmast. Couldn't get up here on this ship. If you see the quotation, that's because he's saying something. I could. But the second mate hadn't listened. Instead, he said to Tim, You'll do. You'll do a good strong lad. Sorry, you look like a, you look a strong lad. So Tib would have gold for his mother when the ship returned to Plymouth. Or to Plymouth. Dickon would have nothing. And his poor widowed mother had eight boys to feed. Do you know what widowed means? Widowed is when in a marriage, people who are married, um, one of the people dies. Like if you're, a, in this case, the mother is a widow because the father died. So Dickon didn't have a father because he died. Okay. Dickon was suddenly jolted out of his misery by a loud voice. Here, boy, carry this. A young gentleman in a leather doublet had dropped a bag at Dickens' feet. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures because a leather doublet looks something like this. Okay, it's like a leather sort of jacket. And this is the typical dressing that you would find in the 16th century. Uh, made mostly out of leather. This man had gloves. It seems to be holding a spade and this hat. He looks kind of like a pirate, like Pirates of the Caribbean. And also I want to show you a picture of Francis Drake. This was Francis Drake. He was a real um, captain of a real ship. So this is a true story. You see how he has a golden necklace around his neck. Okay? So... <clears throat> Then, a gentleman with dark hair and beard called out from the pelican. If we look back, this man had a beard. He had dark hair. Cousin John, not a moment too soon. We sail at five. Dickon couldn't believe his eyes. It was Francis Drake. It must be. He wore a gold chain around his neck, like I just showed you, a gold chain around his neck. Cousin Francis, the young gentleman ran up the gangway. Dickon ran after him, carrying the bag. He could run and climb. He could do lots of things. Now down here it says Julia Jarman, that is the author of this story. Okay? So we have a real story called Stowaway. It's a historical adventure, okay? This is taking place when? In the 16th century. I'm going to remind you that the 16th century was from 1501 to the year 1600. I'm going to write those numbers so that you remember. It's the year 1501 to the year 1600. I'll explain to you some other time why the 16th century is really begins with the number 15. That's a class for some other time. But for now, 
I leave you and in the second video, I'm going to tell you the activities that we will do with this comprehension story. I'll see you in a bit.